everyone. Hope you're all doing well today. I will be analyzing The Mountain by Elizabeth Bishop. This video is divided into four parts. First, we will look at the title. Then, I will be reading the poem and circling and underlining different things that stand out to me. I will be analyzing the poem stanza by stanza and then I will be giving you some tips. I hope you like it. Starting off with the title, I would implore you to pause this video and think of the connotations of this word. If you don't know what I mean by connotations, it is when you draw out an underlying meaning or a symbolic meaning from a word. For example, the color blue could have the connotation sadness, tranquility, bliss, balance, etc. Similarly, I would like you to draw out connotations for the word mountain. I hope you are done with it. I came up with the words timelessness as mountains cannot be destroyed, solitude, people tend to go to remote areas away from the public to meditate, which brings us to the next two words which correlate with this idea, spiritual and sacred. Then comes the adjective, ancient, seen by the fact that mountains have been on earth for quite a while now and with time also comes wisdom. Mountains could be symbolic of power, might, strength, and the inability of every man to climb up a mountain could be associated with the abstract noun, struggle. These are the connotations I came up with. If you came up with more, why don't you write them down in the comment section below and see who agrees and disagrees. Let's read the poem now. The Mountain by Elizabeth Bishop At evening, something behind me. I start for a second. I blench, or staggeringly halt and burn. I do not know my age. In the morning it is different. An open book confronts me, too close to read in comfort. Tell me how old I am. And then the valley stuff impenetrable mists like cotton in my ears. I do not know my age. I do not mean to complain. They say it is my fault. Nobody tells me anything. Tell me how old I am. The deepest demarcation can slowly spread and sink like any blurred tattoo. I do not know my age. Shadows fall down, lights climb, clambering lights, oh children. You never stay long enough. Tell me how old I am. Stone wings have sifted here with feathers hardening feathers. The claws are lost somewhere. I do not know my age. I am growing deaf. Bird calls dribble and the waterfalls go unwiped. What is my age? Tell me how old I am. Let the moon go hang, the stars go fly their kites. I want to know my age. Tell me how old I am. Now that we are done with the initial reading, let's start analyzing the poem stanza by stanza. At evening, something behind me. In the first line, we see there are two pauses and poetry is supposed to be read out loud. So the pauses act as hooks because the listener will be instantly interested in what is going on. The evening is an uncertain time of the day as the sun is setting and darkness is prevailing. Anything can go wrong. The pauses create suspense which engage the readers and listeners. I start for a second, I blench, or staggeringly halt and burn, I do not know my age. Once more, the pauses create a sense of suspense, we see sibilance in start and second, this gives a hissing effect, and in the third line, with the use of staggeringly, we see the persona is prolonging the sibilance, and with the use of the verb burn, we can see why. The sibilance gives a sizzling sound pertaining to the feeling the persona presents. Moreover, words like blench, halt, and burn show you the urgency of the situation. Then the full stop after it allows a pause, letting the sense of pain prevail. I do not know my age. 
The last line of the stanza shows that the persona does not know her age and it could be possible. She includes this because she has been alive for a long time now and has been dealing with this pain for too long to remember. If I was to look at times of the day as parts of one's life, I would deduce dawn to be birth, morning to be childhood, noon or afternoon to be the middle stage of life, evening to be the old age, and night to be death. At the beginning of the stanza, she refers to the evening, perhaps implying she is speaking through the perspective of an old person. Now looking at this stanza as a whole, through the line, something behind me, I feel that old people hope for someone to be with them, but at the same time we see the idea of someone or something being behind them makes them flinch, and it perhaps may be symbolic of the generation gap, which may be the reason for such extreme feelings when contacting one from another generation. And also because old people try to shut themselves out from the world and when someone approaches them they feel that there is no one with them and the person who is coming is there to dictate their way of living. And perhaps this is what pulls them down. That's why this persona halts and burns. The words halt and burn could be the effects of her reality, her inability to fit in society because she is old and incapable of following the same trends set by the youth. The idea of a mountain symbolizing old people could show that they really can't change themselves, they are immovable, their personality traits, thoughts and ideologies have been rooted in. Coming to the next stanza, in the morning it is different. If we follow my theory of times of the day representing different times in one's life, we may deduce that the morning represents childhood and the pause at the end of the line may show the persona is reminiscing the past or dwelling in it. An open book confronts me, too close to read in comfort. Considering the stanza to be from the youth's point of view, I will be looking at this book to be literal as usually children tend to be irritated by books and are more engrossed in physical activities. Hence, these two lines could be from the aspect of one's childhood. Tell me how old I am. In this line, you see the persona's child self is commanding someone to tell her her age. Contrasting to this, in the last line of the first stanza, you see the persona is stating that she does not know her age, perhaps symbolizing the strength and thirst for knowledge one has in their youth, which they give up as they approach the last years of their life. Coming to the third stanza, you see the element of pain is brought back. We started from pain to discomfort to pain again. And then the valley stuff impenetrable mists like cotton in my ears. If you look closely, you'll notice that the first three lines end with one full stop and have no punctuation mark in between. Hence, they have to be read without pauses. It's supposed to be quick paced. If you just close your eyes for a moment and imagine someone standing with their hands pressed against their ears and speedily saying these three lines, starting from the valleys and ending at my ears. You may see the sheer pain invoked by this imagery. The quickness of it may suggest that the persona is in such pain she has to speak quickly to reserve any energy she has left. These impenetrable mists may imply that the persona is unable to hear and see, by this I mean metaphorically, not literally. With the passage of time, one tends not to follow or incorporate the ideology the youth presents in their own lives. So this line may suggest that the persona at this point is unable to perceive the things the society shows. The valleys, on the other hand, are U or V shaped, and the valley could thus show the persona's downfall. The mists could be her past, her thoughts, her haze of deeds, however you want to interpret them. This inability to hear and see may make an old person shut the door on anyone who tries to approach them. Linking back to the first stanza. 
Coming to the fourth stanza, once again we see it is from the perspective of a child. I do not mean to complain. The first line sets the tone of the rest of the stanza. Through the way she says that she does not mean to complain, you can see she has been previously scorned for speaking or disagreeing and perhaps feels vulnerable as she knows she might be crossing a boundary. They say it is my fault. The collective pronoun they shows us that the persona feels victimized and combined with the use of the noun fault shows the vulnerability and social isolation the persona has to cope with. Nobody tells me anything. This line may show the persona is apologetic for she is treated in an inferior manner by keeping her in the dark and not telling her anything. Tell me how old I am. The repeated use of the word tell in the last line of a stanza shows the persona is unaware of a number of things and has the thirst for knowledge which is not being quenched, forcing her to distance herself from the rest and fall into the web of isolation. This theory of her isolating herself from the world could make more sense as in the first stanza she flinches when someone approaches her, as it is hard to have someone near you after you have spent your entire life isolating yourself from everyone. Coming to the fifth stanza, the deepest demarcation. First of all, we have the alliteration, the deepest demarcation, that may bring a tone of gravity. The noun demarcation could mean the persona's scars, which may bring a sense of identity and uniqueness. These scars may show experiences. And then the next line reads, can slowly spread and sink like any blurred tattoo. This could suggest that these scars are her memories, which she is slowly forgetting. She may be trying to say that the hardships of life scar your soul, but with the passage of time, they fade away and you forget about them, perhaps also because a person fades away slowly with time. Their use in another person's life decreases, and eventually they are of no use at all and are waiting for your death to take them away. This idea of memories fading away is emphasized by the line, I do not know my age. In the sixth stanza, it seems that the persona is comparing the old with the young, and one can only do that after experiencing the things life has to offer at those stages, making the reader believe the persona over here is an old woman. Shadows fall down, lights climb. The shadows could represent the old generation and the lights could represent the younger generations. The persona may be telling us that the older generations eventually lose control of the situation and are taken over by the younger generations. If one was to visualize this, you could see total darkness then with the rising sun, the shadows falling as the lights climb. As picturesque as it seems, the persona breaks this image by using the noun phrase clambering lights in the line, clambering lights, oh children. She shows the youth gracelessly climbing and taking control of the situation, perhaps showing her distaste towards young people who want to do things their way instead of sticking to traditional methods. Then the tone becomes motherly when she says, oh children. The exclamation mark at the end may show her inability to suppress her emotions as she reaches this point, when she brings old and youth in one stanza. The next line of the stanza explains the use of the exclamation mark for it reads, You never stay long enough, showcasing her loneliness and feeling of being unwanted. The last line of the stanza is, Tell me how old I am which could be her trying to use this plea to stop the youth from leaving her, bringing a contrast to the first stanza, when she found pain in someone being near her. Perhaps it is this idea of everyone leaving her which makes her think about the outcome of the visit before she even meets someone. Looking at the stanza once more as a whole, we may see that this is the only place the persona has used the pronoun you making it more engaging for the reader. She uses this pronoun to address the youth and does not get a reply, making this an instance of apostrophe, 
showing he is left to wither away. In the next stanza, we may see that the persona is in the middle stages of her life as she gives detailed images of herself transitioning from youth to an old age. Stone wings have sifted here with feathers hardening feathers. The use of sibilance is very prominent here, reminding us of the last use that coincided with the sizzling sound and once again you see pain in these words. The persona shows herself as a bird who once flew freely, but with the passage of time, her feathers hardened and she could no longer fly. A flightless bird means a hungry dying bird. Age will eventually show in a person, and we all eventually end up flightless. This idea is further emphasized by the use of the verb sifted, which may create the image that her strength is being broken down into bits and pieces. What used to be one big boulder is just rocks, and this perhaps makes the image of the mountain ironic, as a mountain represents eternal strength, and over here we see the persona strength crumbling down and this could suggest that this mountain is basically a facade she wears to hide her helplessness. The claws are lost somewhere. The noun claws may be symbolic of strength, passion, desire, and these things too are eventually lost. The stanza ends by reinforcing the idea of helplessness through the words, I do not know my age. Coming to the eighth stanza, I am growing deaf. Once more, the persona is old. In the first line of the stanza, we are told that the persona is losing the ability to hear. This may be said metaphorically. She may mean that she is unable to see the logic in the ideologies the youth presents and finds distaste in it. Hence, she is losing perception, which is why she is no longer acceptable in society. Bird calls dribble and the waterfalls go unwiped. When she says bird calls dribble, she may be hinting to the probability that nature is calling her. She is close to death at this point and the waterfalls go and wipe may mean that she has no one to wipe her tears, that she is a neglected soul once more bringing a tone of ache, grief and helplessness. What is my age? Tell me how old I am. After all this time of her melancholy expressions, she is now finally asking the question she would ask when she was younger. She just wants the answer to one question, nothing else, perhaps showing she has been in pain for too long to tell how old she is, and when will this pain end. Let the moon go hang, the stars go fly their kites, I want to know my age, tell me how old I am. Looking at the last stanza, you can see that the persona is of a young age over here as she is unaware of astronomical details and thinks the moon hangs, showing the naivety and innocence a child has. It may also show that when one approaches senility, their mental health begins to deteriorate and they act like a child. The constant shifts in the entire poem could be symbolic of the persona's mental health deteriorating, which is why she is no longer able to bring a contrast between the mentality of her youth to her mentality now. Now that I have concluded my stanza by stanza analysis, what you need to do now is to go through the poem on your own. If at any point in the analysis you disagreed with what I had to say, that's brilliant. Write down what you think should be the case instead of what I said. Look for proof to support your argument. You may write it down in the comment section or you could discuss it with someone, whatever suits you. I would advise you to go through the poem on your own now and make your own notes. After making your notes, tally them with mine. If there is something you missed out on, write it down. If there is something I missed out on, Mention it in the comment section. The best thing for you to do right now would be to write an entire essay on what you just picked up. I know how horrible it sounds, but you have to ensure none of those amazing ideas bouncing in your head this instant go away before you get a chance to document them. 
I know although this is a stanza by stanza analysis, it does not incorporate comments on every single thing. But consider this as just a sort of guideline explaining how to approach a reference to context or comment based question. If you like the video, do let me know as it will surely brighten my day. If you have any constructive criticism regarding the manner I have made this video, make sure to let me know for it will help me improve my content. Share this video with someone who might need the help. A like and a subscribe would be very helpful. Take care. Bye.